The burning question that every company has right now is how do I integrate ChatGPT with my own company data? And I found a way to do that in literally 10 minutes. And that's what I will show you in today's video. I'm going to introduce you to Flowwise, a visual UI builder that lets you build large language model apps in literally minutes. I'm going to show you how you can set it up, how you can get started, and then we're going to build a conversational AI that can answer questions about your own data. So let's get into it. All right, so today we're going to look at Flowwise, build large language models apps easily. So why is this so awesome? Well, first of all, it's open source, meaning we can just download it, clone it straight from the GitHub repository, get started, spin it up locally to get a visual builder, just like you're seeing over here, to connect building blocks basically together to create a simple app. And the cool thing about this and why I like this is that under the hood, it's all Langchain basically. And I've been doing quite some experiments with Langchain and the repository on my GitHub, you can find over here. I will link that in the description. But the really cool thing is that we can use under the hood Langchain, which is extremely powerful in spinning up large language models apps. But now we can do it from a visual builder. And this will really allow us to pretty quickly in like matter of minutes, prototype large language models apps test the capability and then scale from there. Now, in order to follow along with this tutorial, you need an OpenAI API key, which is free to set up, but it does require you to fill in a credit card because you will get charged very little amounts. Think of cents for every query that you do. And you need a Pinecone API key, which is currently also free to set up and doesn't require a credit card for this tutorial. So to get started, we are first going to visit the Flowwise GitHub repository and then clone this whole repository. If you're new to Git, then please first look up a tutorial on how to do that. But we are going to copy the link over here and then we're going to go to your project. And for me, that is the Langchain Experiments project that I basically already have up and running within VS Code. And then what you would do is you would open up a terminal so you can go new terminal over here. And then first of all, check where you want to store the folder, basically. So you can see in the top right corner. For me, it is over here, the flow wise. So I already have it. But what you would do is first like check, okay, in which project directory am I? And you can do this from VS Code or just from the terminal or the command prompt. And then do git clone and then type the URL over here, copy paste it. And then what this will do basically is it will clone the whole folder that you're seeing over here from the repository. And so you have it locally on your system. That's step one. All right, and then coming back to the repository, if we scroll down in the readme over here, we can see that we have two ways to start this up. So we can use NPM following the quick start, or we can use Docker. If you wanna use NPM, you need NPM installed on your system, which I will link in the description, but I'm going to use Docker for this, and that requires you to install Docker. Again, both of these tools are free and very simple to install. For NPM, follow this tutorial. For Docker, just go to docker.com. Link will also be in the description. So download and install Docker and make sure that it's running. So you open the app after installing it. And the reason that I use Docker is to have a little bit more flexibility because uh, port 3000 is already in use on my system. And with this, we can specify the port. So in order to do that, if you follow along with Docker, we can come back to VS Code. And then if you look in the Flowwise folder that you just cloned from the repository, open it up, there is a Docker folder, and there is at first a .env example file. You should rename that file to .env and then change the port over here to a port that you wanna use. You can also leave it at the default of like 3000. Like I've said, I'm going to use another port because it's already in use. All right, and with the repository now cloned and either npm installed or docker installed, we can start up the application. So I'm going to follow the docker example where we are going to run docker compose up with the flag D inside the docker folder of the project over here. So how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, again, make sure where you are in the terminal. So we are now top level in the uh, Langchain experiments folder. And I'm going to CD first into Flowwise and then into Docker. So then make sure you're in Docker. So you can see the Docker compose file over here. And now remember, I'm doing this on Mac. On Windows, this might be a little different to do this, but the principle should, should be the same. You should configure your terminal to be in this folder. And then when you run LS, you should see the Docker compose YAML file. What we can now do is we can run docker-compose up 
dash D. And what this will do is this will spin up the Docker container and start a local server basically for the application to run on. So as you can see, it's now spinning up the containers. And again, make sure that Docker is running. So download the application first and then make sure it's running in the background. And then what you can do once it's up and running, you can come to the browser, open up a new tab and then go to localhost and then specify the port that you just mentioned. And now we're inside the application. We're inside Flowwise AI. This is really exciting, right? So I already have two examples over here, but I'm gonna show you how to build these from scratch right now. All right, so let's start off with the conversational retrieval QA chain. Fancy word, but we are going to go to the marketplace and then we can see that example over here. So it's very convenient. They already have some boilerplates that we can use as a start. So I'm going to select this one over here. We can already see the flow. And now all we have to do basically is filling some parameters and our API keys and we can get started. So I'm going to say we're going to use this template and I'm first going to save this and I'm going to call this document chatbot. All right. Now we're going to go from left to right and basically say, hey, this is our text splitter. So if you remember from the previous tutorial that I did on Langchain, this is how you chunk documents and allow it to feed it to the AI without surpassing the token limit. Here we can upload a TXT file in this case. So that is also already in place. And now we have two open AI blocks over here one for the chat and one for the embeddings to convert the data, the text to a vector that we can use to perform similarity search. So the step that we now have to do is first filling your OpenAI API key. So you can find your OpenAI API key in the portal at openai.com and then you just paste it in here. Now next we have to configure Pinecone and for this you are going to copy and paste first of all your Pinecone API key, all right? So put that in here. And then we have to select an environment and also an index. So in order to do that, you are going to go back to the Pinecone console. You go to indexes, then select create index and you can name this whatever you want. As you can see, I already have a test index that I'm gonna use for this. And then, so it's the name. And then the important thing is that we need to specify the correct dimensions. And that is the number over here. And that is because that is the number that OpenAI uses within their embeddings that we are going to use. So specify that number over here and then just select create index. And as, as you can see, we're on the starter plan, no costs, it's just seven days of storage. So make sure to create that. And then what we have to do is we have to copy the environment. So as you can see, I'm in Asia, Southeast GCP, put that into the environment over here and then also specify your index over here, which is test in my case namespace is not required i'm not sure what that is for but we can leave it blank all right so now we have configured the api keys we have configured pinecone and now we are basically ready to start chatting with data so make sure to save this so we have our document chatbot and now the final thing that we have to do is upload a file so i've prepared a simple txt file which is literally just the readme of the langchain experiments gitter repository that i've created and we are going to import that so you can see we now have the txt file save it again and now watch the magic happen we can open up the chat interface over here and then can ask what is this doc about and here we go this doc is about langchain a comprehensive framework designed for developing applications powered by large language models and boom we created a chatbot that can answer questions about your own data in under 10 minutes and actually what's going on behind the scenes is, is pretty interesting it's using Langchain, but in a very accessible way, as you can see. But the cool thing about this, at least what I find really cool, is that, like you see, you can we can really use this for rapid prototyping. So I wouldn't be confident like creating a full application with this, but, and that's just because I don't really know exactly what's going on under the hood, but I know that we are using building blocks that are accessible within Langchain. And in that way, connecting OpenAI with the embeddings and Pinecone, and now we have an experiment over here that we can test and validate and then move forward. All right, and now in this example, we are using a text file as you can see over here. But the cool thing about Flowwise is that we can very easily click on the plus over here and see all the available building blocks that we can use. And if we come to the document loaders over here, we can see that we can load CSV, docx, GitHub pages, JSON files. We can link it to Notion, PDF files. So you can very easily swap out this, let's say, so this is now text file. Let's just delete it. Say, hey, we want to do PDF. Just drag it in here, connect the dots. So this is the text splitter and then the document over here. 
boom, we can now upload the PDF. And now again, this is all functionality that is already possible in Langchain, but you might not have been aware of that already. So if you go to the Langchain documentation, you can see the document loaders. And here you can basically see most of the document loaders that are also integrated within Flowwise right now. So the cool thing is, hey, if this works, you can just go to Langchain and see like, hey, what, how do we load the PDFs? And then create it using custom code so you fully understand it. That's really how I see Flowwise right now. Let me quickly show you another cool example. So let's go to the conversational AI. And this is another example that you can pick from the marketplace. And I haven't changed anything about this. I've just built in the API keys. And this also requires SERP API, which is a tool that you can use to search the internet. So you need an API key for that. I also believe that is free. But here you can see we have a conversational agent and we can say, hey, these are the tools that they can use. So calculator and access to the internet. Then we have a chat model, open AI, and then we also have memory. So this conversational agent must remember the conversation basically. So if you say something and then two prompts later, it should still remember what you said in the first place. Otherwise it's a pretty stupid conversational AI. So that is what we do with buffer memory. So the cool thing that we can do over here is let's open up another chat and we can say something like, hey, who's Dave Eblar and how many subscribers does he have? So this is not something that would come up if you ask that to ChatGPT. So right now, what's happening behind the scenes? Like this chat agent is first of all, like analyzing this question basically, and then determining, hey, do I need any tools? to gather this information. And as you can see, here's the result. Dave Abelar is a freelance data scientist with 13.4K subscribers and 43 videos on his YouTube channel. So let's quickly see how accurate that is. So I'm currently at 13.7, but the 43 videos is correct. So I'm not entirely sure where it's getting these numbers from, but it's definitely connected to the internet. And now the next cool thing that we can do, since it is a conversational agent, it has memory and it also has a tool like a calculator. We can say like, hey, what is that subscriber count multiplied by four? So we don't reference the number, we just ask it. So it should remember, hey, this is the subscribers. All right, boom, there's the answer. Now let's quickly check this because I've been fooled by these calculators before in one of my previous videos. So let's take the 13.4 times four, boom, spot on. Okay, that is correct. And so now you basically have a really cool sandbox that you can play around with and just experiment with all of the tools. So if I come in here, there are even more tools so you can read file, API requests, web browsing, write files. There's a lot of stuff in here that you, that you can just like chain together in this visual builder and then play around with it. All right. And now the last thing that I want to show you, and that's also pretty cool, is you can click on this embed button over here. So here's a simple embed using HTML, but what I'm more interested in right now is Python. So what you can do is you can come over here and just create a simple Python file. And that's what I did already over here. So in the Flowwise folder, I created a simple source folder and put in a connect.py over here. And you can see, I just copy and paste it, everything that is in here, and then played around with the queries. So what I can do is I spin up this interactive session over here and then run the query. So who is Dave Ebelar and how many subscribers does he has? So let's do this. And now what I've changed is I added a simple print statement so it will also output the result and boom, there we go. Dave Eblar is a freelance data scientist. We have the same answer right now. And one good thing to note, and this took me some time to figure out, is how to deal with the memory key and the input key from the buffer memory. So Flowwise is very new. And if you come to the repository over here, you can see like documentation like coming soon. So. That is currently a, a drawback, I would say, of using Flowwise AI, especially if you want to integrate it into your own applications like this, then there is not much documentation available right now. So I figured if you just copy and paste this example, it won't take the memory into consideration. But if you just add the memory key and the input key, similar to like you do in Langchain, like this, then it works. So now if we, for example, do the same request say like hey what's the subscriber count multiplied by four so this is a good test to make sure that it has access to the previous message and as you can see we get the same result here again so now this is of course on a local server but you can just as well 
deploy this to a real server and turn this into a real endpoint basically that you can interact with. And that is something that I did in my previous video where I showed you how to deploy AI apps to the cloud using Azure. So if you're interested in that, go check out that previous video. So that's Flowwise in a nutshell, really awesome piece of software and huge shout out to the creators for creating this in such a short time frame and also making it open source so we can all play around with this. I think this is very exciting. And like I've said, how this will fit into my stack and into my workflow will be to quickly test and evaluate ideas for like rapid prototyping. So I'm currently doing a lot of AI projects for clients that I work with, and this tool will definitely help me to quickly test and evaluate ideas. Like I've said, I'm not gonna build like full end-to-end -end applications based on this, but just test individual components and then build it my own using Langchain. That's really where I see Flowwise right now, at least for my workflow. And now if you are interested in how you can sell AI services to clients as a freelancer, then check out the first link in the description. That's it for this video. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel and then I'll see you in the next one.